Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Hello. Hello. Oh, yay. Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. It is so exciting. I was telling everybody this is our first live. This is our first live we've ever done. Have you ever done a live before? Um, hold on, girl. My airplane just went dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Is this one going to work for me? Okay. Hey, everybody who is joining. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining in for our, hey, my, our, my first live. <laughs> this is your first live ever? My first live ever. Oh, wow. On Instagram. <laughs> I've I've never, done, well, you know what? Let me take that back. I've done other lives with other people, but okay, I've never okay. done my own live. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I and I'm not saying, but I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are going to talk about protective styling because we have the queen of protective styles here. <laughs> I always call her the queen of protective styles because she knows what she is doing with protective styling. So Thank her name you. is Rhonda. Yes, and she is Coco Styles here on Instagram. So we are doing, Hydrothermal Naturals is doing a 20-week protective style challenge. So we're just tucking our way, tucking our hair away for 20 weeks. Um, it ends in the, at the end of June. And we're just tucking our hair in, um, moisturizing, taking care of our hair. And we wanted to do this live because I, I wanted to really connect with Sharonda because I know she knows a lot about protective style and she's been doing it for years. And, um, you know, since we were doing a protective style challenge, it seemed like the perfect match, mm -hmm. you know, to, to connect with you and to do this live with you. And also, um, yeah, we have a lot in common. Like, we used to be nurses. <laughs> and then, you know, yep. we're both entrepreneurs. So we yep. have, we have, we have, we've known each other for, I don't know how long, maybe eight years or more. Maybe eight, maybe nine, because those eight. So maybe about nine, a while. Yeah, a while, a while. Yeah, so... So yeah, so since we're doing this 20-week protective style challenge, um, I just wanted you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, tell us about you, like, how do you, how did you get interested in hair, and how did you get interested in, like, the protective styling side as opposed to, like, you know, just, like, doing other type of styles. <laughs> you know what? Actually, so I've been interested in hair my entire life. Um, I learned how to braid by watching my aunt. Her name is Latanya. She's an educator, but she always braided, you know, that was like her little side hustle. And I was always tagging along with her and just watch. And so when I became a teenager, you know, that was just a little extra way to make a little change or practice on friends. Uh -huh. You know, fast forward to me um, becoming natural, I started styling my own hair. So in protective styles, basically. Okay. Um, you know, we all try that transitioning journey. Mm -hmm. and then we may try the big chop. So I big chop the second time um I tried to go natural. And I didn't like the little TWA look. I hated mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I I hated that look. So I would do like a little twist on the side or I would do just something so it didn't look like, you know, like an auntie. Look old. Like, yeah, so. right. I started styling my own hair, and then people, as it began to grow out, you know how, oh, who does your hair? Who does your hair? And I'm right. like, I do my own hair. Do you do it for other people? I'm like, no, I don't, you know? And yeah. eventually, uh, a good friend of mine and my brother was like, why don't you just do it? You know, so that's how I started taking clients, nice. and it started out with just, you know, colleagues or friends or, you know, just different people that I was personally acquainted with first uh -huh. and it just kind of grew you know it started out as a side hustle and then it, it just grew but I've always advocated for healthy hair you know right. so I felt like you know I just the convenience of protective styling um the benefits of protective styling um you actually see your your retention and then doing it in a way that maintains the integrity of your hair because a lot of uh -huh. people do protective styles but they're not necessarily advantageous, if that makes right, sense. Right, because they you know can I mean? do these protective styles and then they end up with setbacks, you know, yeah. and then the hair is either the same length or it hasn't grown at all or it's broken even worse. Exactly. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right, right, right. And so my intention with Coco Styles is to 
not only focus on the protective style, but to also focus on the maintenance. You know, because mm-hmm. everyone focuses on the style, but are you focusing on what's underneath the style? You know what I mean? Because all right. black women, per se, we want to be able to wear our hair out. We want to be able to wear the trendy styles, but we also want to be able to wear our own natural hair. But if you're just doing protective styles and you never do maintenance, you never do trims, you never do deep conditioners, you never do any of those things, then the protective style is basically pointless. You won't see the right. benefits of it. So, right, right. Yeah, well, I'm some. Yeah, yeah, because we did. And for people that may not know me, some of your followers that may not know me, my name is Salim. I didn't even introduce myself. <laughs> my name is Salim Kairai, and I'm the owner of, co-owner of Hydrothermal Naturals products. And a couple of weeks, like maybe about eight years ago, we did a 20-week protective style challenge. Mm-hmm. And I've been wearing my hair. I've ch- worn relaxers, then I've worn natural, then I had locks a couple times, then I shaved it off. So I was like, you know what, it's time. I've been wearing my hair short for a while, and I was like, it's time for me to grow my hair back out. So the only way I'm going to be able to grow it out is <laughs> to protect the styling because I am so like, oh, if I see somebody with some short hair, I'm like, oh, I want to cut it off. And then, you know, I really want to grow my hair out and retain length. And, you know, I just want to grow it out now. So I was like, right. hey, let's do a particular style challenge. A lot of our customers hopped on. Mm-hmm. And that's how it got started. So what are you rocking right now with your protective style? What are you rocking with in your hair right now? I am rocking. This is Zuri um, Passion Twist. Um, oh, okay. These are they look really twists. cute. And they, they look like spring twists, but they're actually Passion Twists. And they're like nine. I think the shortest length is like nine inches. Okay. But, um, yeah. Crochets are my go-to protective style. So yeah. that's what I'm wearing. Right, yeah. so your hair is cornrow, and then you just crochet the the loop, the the actual twist in t- in, the, in the cornrow. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes. So right now, what I'm rocking is this wig that I made. So I made a wig. I um got the net, and then I just kind of crocheted the hair oh, into the net. Yeah, yeah, and then I just twisted it up it was like i don't know i can't think of the name of the hair it's kind of like some kinky hair mm-hmm. and i just twisted it up rolled the ends and then dipped it in hot water mm-hmm. and then kind of just fluffed it out and <laughs> i have put so some combs in and that's it so my hair is all just corn roll all back right now yeah exactly. that's what i've been rocking and then rocking hats and head wraps and stuff like exactly. that yeah so how did you like learn about protective styling or was this it just something that you just kind of got into like did you like the term protective styling or was it just kind of like oh this is what i'm doing i've been doing this anyway this whole time so (laughs) i actually researched it because um when i went natural you know the first time well i won't say the first time but when i i guess first started my natural journey it was my goal to retain length so um researching the best way to do that um i knew i didn't want to be a straight natural like just wear a press all the time Mm -hmm. right yeah i started researching protective styles and it started out with me just protective styling my natural hair you Mm -hmm. know um and just trying to find out the best way to do it what's considered a protective style what's not considered a protective style and just right. research and trial and error basically and find you know figuring out what works and what doesn't mm-hmm. right yeah. right yeah because with me and i mentioned to you before i don't know if a lot of people know about wanaki but that's yeah. how i really found out about protective styling wanaki is a model from the 1990s and i think it was like 97 she had her mm-hmm. own product line called the verifin product were you able to see, check her out I, I looked, but I didn't get a chance to go through like, everything. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she was a model, and she had relaxed hair, and it was, this was like, I think in 1997, 96 or something, and it was down to her tailbone, and I'm like, how on earth did she get her hair like that? And she was the first person who really talked about protective stuff. I think she probably invented it, because she always talked about, if you wear your hair out, you know, the air will dry it out. You want to keep it she bunned a lot so she didn't do a lot of braids but all she did was like um you know those little french rolls people used to wear Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the french rolls she did the buns a lot of buns and then she would just braid her own hair loop it around and just all kinds of styles that kept her hair tucked away and she said always moisturize keep your hair very moisturized fill it in with her oil and um 
her hair just flourished. And I was like, this really makes sense. If you leave your hair out all the time, you know what I'm saying? Air is going to get to it. It's going to be more, it, keep it like tucked away. It really just kind of clicked with me. And I was yeah. like, okay, it really makes sense. I was like, okay. And so you guys look her up. Her name is Wanake, W-A-N-A-K-E-E. And she is like, you know, the I guess we're gonna call her person. we're gonna call her the pioneer of protective styles. Right, exactly. <laughs> the pioneer of protective styling. Yeah. And she had this little booklet out. She had her own business. She sold the business. So now I don't know what she's really doing. Um I tried to check her out on Facebook and I noticed that she cut all of her hair off. <laughs> yeah, but um yeah, she was that. the first person. Yeah, she was the first person and she had relaxed hair tailbone length and i was like it is something to this it is something to this yeah so yeah but you gotta do it the right way Correct. you know the right way so what do you what are some of the don'ts that you would say um with protective styling what are the, some of the mistakes that you think people make with protective styling because you know i've seen people wearing protective styling all the time and then when i see their hair it's like the same length so it no no it's like no benefit you know so what it what are the key what are the don'ts when it comes to protective styling for you for your opinion don't for me um the don't i have to start basically at the top it starts with maintenance so mm -hmm. if you're not maintaining your hair you're wasting your time like right. and what I mean about maintenance is if you're going into a protective style with dirty hair, if you're going into a protective style with damaged hair, you're wasting your time. Um, right. So that would be the first don't treat the hair first. You know, like you'll see, I don't know if you all follow me, but it, on my Instagram, sometimes I'll list in my caption, the order, you know, of how I acquired that style. It's cleanse, you know what I'm saying? Shampoo cleanse. Condition, hydrate, moisturize, style in that order. Mm -hmm. If you're yes. not doing it in that order, then you're wasting your time. Or yes. you may not see the optimal benefits of protective styling. Um, if you're not getting regular trims, you're not going to retain your length that you are uh, acquiring. So you still won't get the benefits of protective styling. So for me, it's health and maintenance first before, yeah. before the styling. Um so that would be one don't if they're not maintaining. The second one is not treating the hair. So, you know, we, I was once that natural, like, I'm only going to get a trim once a year. I don't care. I'm trying to keep my lips. And, you know, uh -huh. realize that when you do that, you're losing lips. So, regular <laughs> right. trims, you know what I'm saying? So, regular trims. So then it's kind of like a regimen. Um, so once we get past that point, you get the protective style, then you have to learn or be able to discern when to remove the protective style. So yes, the, that is another a, one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We have oh my gosh. seen those styles that have went one week too many and you're like, okay, sis, time to take it out. You know what I mean? So, right. Knowing when to take it out. And I don't do a style. I don't recommend any of my styles go past eight weeks. I have some clients that may push it, but after eight weeks, every anything that's in your hair, it needs to come out because you yes. need to let your follicles relax and rest. You need to actually cleanse your scalp, you know, because by that time, product has built up, bacteria has built up, dirt, oil. So whatever you're applying is not penetrating anyway. So knowing when to remove the protective style, a lot of times people keep their protective styles too long and that uh -huh. contributes to breakage. Um, yeah. the, the don'ts also is improper removal of protective styles. Uh -huh. um, that's another don't. If you are getting a protective style by a professional or um, by a braider or by anybody, you need to be instructed on how to properly remove it if you're not going to return to that individual to actually have the, the style uninstalled. So like yeah. with my services, I don't remove any styles that I didn't install. Like, uh -huh. twist, like if I didn't install it, I don't remove it. Um, yeah. But I always recommend, like, if you're not hair savvy, go to the professional to have it removed. You know, we all hear the stories about I cut my hair trying to take my braids out or oh, God. You know, I, I broke my hair off. You know, so you, you've acquired all this growth and then only to get to taking it out and you cut your hair. Right, so, right. You know what I mean? Or you, you know what? <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me tell you what I did. This was a lot. This was like I think this is the first time I ever had braids. So this was like a long, probably the night. This is before I even really got into hair. Um, but I, I, I don't know if anybody else has made this mistake, but just to take the braid out and then just shampoo your hair without oh, no. detangling or anything like that, and your hair is wet and it's like a lost cause after that. Like you can't. You, it's almost impossible to detangle it when it's wet and you have all that build up and i just had to cut my hair off that was like what? yeah yeah that was like uh something that i would never forget i was like in high school and i was like oh let me just take the braid out and i just washed my hair but i didn't detangle it you know after and get all the build up or whatever in there mm -hmm. to shed hair get all that out yes. and i like uh, there was a, something that I would never forget. So I, I was like, I, you have to make sure you yeah, you know it so. before yeah. you watch it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes, oh. yes. Cause I can, but I, I definitely understand because I've heard people tell me, oh, I can't wash my hair with braids. Like I can't, you know, I have these braids and I can't. I met this um lady about a, about a couple of weeks ago. She was telling me, oh, I can't wait to take these braids out. And her braids look great. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because I can't wash my hair. I'm like, you can wash your hair. You can wash your hair with braids. Like, you can wash your hair with any protective style. And that's important because a lot of people are like, okay, I got this protective style in. Now I don't have to do anything with my hair. You know, I got my hair in this weave. I got my hair cornrow. I got my hair braided up. And their hair, they're not doing anything. They're not moisturizing. They're not stilling them with oil. They're not shampooing. They're not doing anything with their scalp. They're just not doing anything. Right. You know, when they take their, their it out, then their hair is all dry, and it's just going to break right off. So yeah. I just tell people, you, you just have to continue to take care of your hair how you would normally take care of it. You, know, you still have to shampoo it and on a regular basis. You still have to moisturize, like you were saying, seal in that oil. You know, you still seal in the moisture. You still have to take care of your hair exactly. underneath. <laughs> exactly. So you can't just ignore your hair. And that's the mistake that I think that a lot of people do. They just say, okay, I got this in. I'm just going to ignore it and not do anything to my hair. Yep. I agree. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's definitely a don't. <laughs> that's a don't. So yeah, you got to know when to take it out and just go ahead and have your, your regimen in place. So you already know. So you mm -hmm. already know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, the don't. So, like, what what do you think are, like, the best protective styles? Would you, would you say that crochet is the best protective style? Crochet or? You know, um, I would say, you know, it's not really a definitive answer because it depends on the client. Um, Everyone doesn't respond well to everything. Crochets are my favorite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, because they're just easy and it's for me other than a natural protective style on your natural hair crochets are the least um i guess causes the least tension uh-huh um, i would say crochets and then i would also say just natural protective styles um even though i don't do them i would also say um full sew-ins like without any leave out uh -huh. a good one because all of your hair is included it's braided down and it's tucked away but if mm -hmm. I had to rank them, I would probably say crochets first and then natural protective style with your, you know, your ends tucked away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, like, um, I, 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 <laughs> micro braids, I do not like micro braids as a protective style. The micro braids are, is not a protective style. You know, um, <laughs> I, I've, I've met people who wore micro braids for years and their hair is the same length because it's so much t tension on your hair, you know, because the braids are so small and then you have all this tension on your hair. Exactly. So micro braids is a definite no <laughs> when it comes to protecting <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know I, what? I, would, I would say box braids, though. I will say box oh. braids as a protective style because they are just so easy and they're so mm -hmm. common but the thing of it is with the box braids you gotta protect your edges like you gotta mm -hmm. protect them. that's a that's a number one killer like box <laughs> but i think that once if they're installed properly that's like a great protective style and the reason why is because what you mentioned earlier you can shampoo your hair with box braids you know, you can condition your, well, you know, you can shampoo your scalp, of course, but, and apply everything that you would do in box braids that you can do with your hair out. A lot of people mm -hmm. don't do it, but you, you still can. And so I would add that to the list, box braids as well. 
Yeah, and a lot of people are rocking the chunky, like the maybe like the eight eight box braids, you know. Oh or yeah, the eight, big ones. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, the big Real ones. Popular. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have you hook me up when my hair gets long enough. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about I I right, right here, here right now. So maybe when it get a little you bit longer, I'll be four inches. Yeah. Four, yeah, four, four inches. inches. What about Senegalese twists? Yeah, those are considered a protective style as well. Senegalese twists. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Those? yeah. 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 And somebody else had a question about how do you wash and stop it from getting frizz- frizzy? What do you mean? Uh, how do you wash and stop it from? I guess like when you wash your braids and then they get like a little frizzy. Like I know what like corn rolls. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like like oh. Okay. I got what you said. Yeah. That um. Well, it depends. In certain areas, that's inevitable because when you do box braids, you know, your natural hair is somewhat tucked under yeah, the tucked. extension uh-huh. hair. You know, it's tucked. But with natural hair, it reverts. So what you can do is if it gets frizzy, just after you shampoo it, just apply mousse and then tie the braids down. Yeah, that's how I was gonna, yeah. yeah, that'll smooth it back out. But actually, yeah. the frizz is somewhat, I mean, when you're natural, at some point, they're going to frizz, even if your hair is tucked. But yeah. you, know, you can just smooth it down with mousse and then tie your hair down, and it'll mm-hmm. it'll smooth back out. It'll it'll yeah. smooth, take away some of the frizz. Yeah, yeah, and like with cornrows too. Like I know once, like I had cornrows once, and once my hair started frizzing out, uh-huh. then I would just take some of our gel. I don't have the gel here with me right now, but I would take some gel, apply the gel to mm-hmm. my to my hair, tie it down, and yeah. then. When I would take it out, it looked like fresh cornrows. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So yep. tying it down, tying it down tying is a, yeah, tying it down is a, is a good, um, is a great tip to keep it from fr- looking frizzy and stuff frizzy. like that. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. Also too, tying it down when you shower or when you take a bath is also imperative because when you're natural, any little hint of moisture, you're gonna frizz. Yeah. So you're yeah. Wearing any of you're wearing a protective style and any pieces of your hair is exposed make sure you have it tied down when you're showering when you're working out like when my clients Mm -hmm. have like feed feed in braids i tell them to tie it down tie your hair down and then say if you're working out in the morning before work keep your hair tied down until you like pull in a parking lot and once it dries by the time you get to work it's dry then remove the scarf yeah remove it if you remove it while your hair is still wet you're still going to get the frizz but if you just tie it down and let it dry and then remove whatever you have it wrapped with, then the frizz, it will eliminate that. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question about working out with protective styles. Like with your style, you can just rock that and work out. Yeah, and you I don't have to pull worry. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I pull it up. And, and that's yeah. another reason why I like crochet. Right, you right. really can't mess them up. Like, right. <laughs> and crochet is easy to take out. Like those, yes. you can pull it out. You know, it's yeah. easy to take out. Yeah, and then, like, exactly. you can work out with it and everything, too. Like, I can work out with this and not have to worry right. about it frizzing up or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that is a good, that's a really good tip. I, I forgot to ask about the working out, but that's a really good tip. Yeah, it's a very good so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any, like, protective style, like, horror stories or anything like that from clients that, like, kept it in too long or, I don't know, like... Anybody who had like, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to went think. to somebody else and came to you and any. I've had some. <laughs> I've had some of those. Woo. Yeah, yeah. I've had <laughs> some of those. Um, where clients went and got one in particular, a client had gotten. Um, she went to someone and got the faux lock. Oh, faux lock. She had yeah. some of those, and I don't know what happened, but when she came back, her hair was, like, gone in a, in a certain oh, area. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, and that's, like, yeah. I I don't know what happened. I She says that she doesn't know what happened. She did say that they were extremely tight, and then when she tried to remove them, they she started cutting so it, it was a combination of cutting and breakage and tension. Anyway, um, long story short, I ended up sending her to the barber. She ended up with oh, a wow. paper, paper cut because it was it was severely damaged. And she yeah. tried, 
I was unable to service her that day. She went to the barber and she came back another day and got like a partial crochet style. So like her side uh-huh. and her back was tapered and then she got crochet in the top and she just had to start all over. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, that and just people mistakenly cutting their hair sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I noticed that some people, um, like, if they keep their protective styles in, like, for a super, super long, long time, and then they come, do you have ever have anybody come to you after keeping their protective style in, like, for for a super, super long time, and then it's like difficult to, you know, get the breakage? Get the, get, yeah, mm, not really. Oh, really? Okay, so you have some clients that are really, you have, like, really good clients that really, they oh, you know. Huh? They don't want to hear me fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, they do not want to hear me fuss because that's all they talk about. But, no. Yeah. And for the yeah. most part, most of, I, most clients, they want their hair to be healthy. They want it to be in a good state. So they don't really, I mean, not really. I haven't had yeah. that. Yeah, that's good. You got some good clients. Yeah, you got some good clients. For real, girl. Yeah. What do you want me to do with this? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And other thing is, like, to give your hair a break. I think it's good to give your hair a break, too, in between protective styles, you know. Oh, yeah. Just not do, like, back-to-back-to-back braids, back-to-back-to-back, you know. Just kind of maybe give your hair, you know, maybe a couple days at least just to kind of yeah. just breathe and do some scalp massages mm-hmm. and stuff. And then you can put your protective style back in again. Yep. Yep, yeah. I agree. And then yeah. I was going to say, too, scalp simulation as well plays a big part, too. Because yes. you're increasing that circulation. If you have, like, a, a, a challenge area, just that scalp massage, a lot of times, like, we get the oils and we get the products and we just lay it on top. Mm-hmm. Massaging your scalp and making sure that it's penetrating into your scalp, that helps, too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. That's why I was going to talk about the, um, this is what I use, uh, of course, Hydrothermal Naturals products. But I put, this yes. is a great massager you know when you put the um this is a great sealer and it's great for scalp massage mm-hmm. it has black seed oil in there mm-hmm. so i put this on my hair every day um and i also use the moisturizer so i moisturize my hair and i seal it every day so i just right. I take i have my hair going back in cornrows i just take some of the moisturizer I rub it on there mm-hmm. yeah rub it on there and then i take the oil rub it on there and I, we also have a follicle mist that i spray and i don't have that with me right now it's upstairs but yeah. i spray the follicle mist on my scalp and my roots and i just kind of massage massage yeah. massage like you said massaging is like really important because you know you want to get that circulation to the Go um, to the roots, the hair roots. Yep. Yep. So massage yeah. is super, super important. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that's what right. the next thing that we're going to talk about is um, products and what type of products are how to moisturize and how to what is the best way to moisturize your hair. A lot of people think that they can't moisturize their hair while their hair is in braids and stuff like that, but you really can. You know, you, you really can. can. Mm-hmm. You really can. Um, so what are some I of the methods that? Um, I always say that shampoo starts at the bowl. I mean, not shampoo. Moisture starts at the bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times you don't realize that. Or in the shower or wherever you're shampooing your hair, you want to make sure that your shampoo is a hydrating, moisturizing shampoo. Because once your pores are open, that is when you're going to get all that you're going to get out of a pot. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So if they're doing it if you guys are protective styling at home or rather if you're going to a salon hopefully they're using you know quality products but if salima has a moisture boosting shampoo where is it i do i do and i'm yeah, so bad i don't have it if you're natural you need a moisturizing shampoo period uh-huh. if you're natural and then you want to kind of like layer and i know you promote this you want to layer your moisture in your hair so your shampoo, uh-huh. your conditioner, and then your moisturizer, and then your oil. So yes. your leave-in condition, your leave-in conditioner, and then your moisturizer, and then your oil. You kind of yes. have to like build on top of each other. And I I tell people that, and they're like, "That's a lot, you know. That's a lot of stuff." No, you know, it makes sense though. Yeah, it makes sense. And if you do it, you'll see a difference in your hair because sometimes people just moisturize with oil but oil is not a moisturizer no oil does not moisturize oil is not you know they're like oh I, what do you put in your hair i use coconut oil i use olive oil i okay but you gotta put something 
with it, you know. Yeah. They mate. It needs a mate. It needs a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. It, it needs a partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it needs a partner. It can't be single. Like your oil can't right. be single. You it yeah. needs a moisturizer to go with it. So yeah. in that order, and you have to do it regularly. So like when clients are in protective styles, I tell them a minimum of three times a week. Go in, moisturize your hair, if not every day, because uh -huh. it builds up oil more. But at least three times a week, go in, moisturize your hair, keep uh -huh. it hot up at night to keep your moisture in. Uh -huh. or a satin pillowcase because cotton, you know, robs us of oil. So it's just like little simple things like that that help to keep the moisture in once you get it in. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, the, definitely, 100%. And we and another thing is to keep the hair, if the hair has to be, like, clean. Like, you know, people say, okay, let me just, you know, do a co-wash or whatever and then just add more conditioner on top. And But you have to have, like, a clean slate because if your hair has a lot of buildup on there, adding another adding conditioner and doing co-washes is not going to do it. Like, you have to have I, a clean slate so that your hair can absorb that much. <laughs> yeah, because you have to, like, if you just think about adding a whole bunch of conditioner, conditioner, conditioner onto your hair, you have to cleanse it. You have to have a clean slate so that your hair can be able to absorb all the moisturizers, the deep conditioners, and all that stuff. Because if you just, if you just add and product on top of product and you're not giving your hair that clean slate, then it's just your hair is not going to be able to absorb the moisture and it's not going to be able to absorb the, 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 the deep conditioners, you know? So we have like, this is our clarifying shampoo. We have clarifying shampoo. We have an SLS free shampoo and we have our moisture boosting shampoo. We have a lot of different shampoos. We even have a shampoo bar. Tea, tea, tea I'm shampoo glad you bar. mentioned that clarifying shampoo because mm -hmm. if you are coming out of a, of a um, protective style, that's very important. Yes, like the it is. shampoo is very important because you, like you say, you have all this stuff on your hair. So right. like if anybody is watching and if you are wearing protective styles, immediately after coming out, you need a clarifying shampoo first. Yes, and yes. what it's going to do is going to pull all the product and all the oils that you've been putting on every day. Mm -hmm. it's pull all that off, and it kind of gives your hair and your scalp a clean slate. Right. Then you go in with your regular shampoo. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. You know, you may shampoo your hair and it feel like that slimy. It just have like a yeah. feel of me. Yeah, right. Why? And you don't have a clean slate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then and a lot of times, clarify it. Right, because a lot of times people will just shampoo and they may not do it like a deep cleansing and then when they do do their uh, moisture boosting shampoo i mean deep conditioner or moisturizing deep conditioner they rinse it out they're like my hair doesn't feel moisturized that's because the moisturizing conditioner wasn't able to penetrate because you didn't start with the clean slate exactly. so then that's and not on top of the hair Right. So I always recommend if your hair doesn't feel good after you do your deep condition, you have to go back and clarify, deep oh, cleanse, and then moisturize your hair, then deep condition, and then you will notice that your hair will be, it will feel really soft and moisturized. So that's really right. important. I ask, how do you feel about clarifying shampoo? Hopefully we just answered that question. Um, clarifying is like a priority, especially if you're wearing protective styles and especially if you're wearing like buns or puffs, you know, we use the eco styler yes. on our hair, on our puffs. Yes. If, if you're doing wash and goes with like gels and things of that nature, you do need to clarify. Yes. Moisturize after clear. Yes. Um, clarify, what, clar what a clarifier does, it pulls everything out. So it's going to pull everything out, the products, the dirt, everything. So you do have to go back in with a moisturizing shampoo to put your moisture back in. Yes. I have to answer your question. Yes. Light, bright. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is so true. That is so very true. People. People don't know about that. So yeah, that's, and, that's a good and, tip. And uh, Salima's hydrothermal clarifying um shampoo is the truth. You and a little goes a long way. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we have a moisturizing shampoo which I don't have here, but we have our conditioner. We have a moisturizing conditioner, moisture boosting conditioner that is really good as well that you can use. You know, while you're protective mm -hmm. styling as well. Yeah. Oh, 
and our vitamin. It's always good to take a hair vitamin. If you don't have one, it's always great to take a hair vitamin to help your hair grow and to give your body the nutrients that it needs for our hair growth as well. So that's what yeah. I take my hair vitamin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, what else did we, we do? We need, I think we covered just about everything. Yeah. Types of products to use. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else out there have any questions about anything about any type of protective styles or any type of um any other things that you think that we didn't cover any do's and don'ts or anything like that about protective styles or any type of protective styles or anything like that? Moisturizing. Uh -huh. I'm looking through them now. Let's see. So moisturizing and hydrating is not the same thing. No, it's not. Uh uh. Moisturizing and hydrating is not the same. Hydrating, you're basically putting water into the hair or into the pores or to the shaft. And then with moisturizing, it's actual moisture. Uh, how can I put it? I had a little example that uh, it's kind of like hydrating. It's like you're shampooing your car. So think about hydration as like, a car wash and then think about moisture as like you're buffing it or shining it if that makes sense or it might have confused you even more <laughs> it might have confused you even more but basically when your hair is hydrated it receives moisture better than it mm -hmm. is not hydrated hopefully that yeah happens. yeah so just hopefully water is that. like the, yeah water is the ultimate form of hydration just think of it like water is like the ultimate form of hydration that's why you want to make sure that your moisturizer does have is like a water-based moisturizer and not petroleum based or anything like that right yeah right. and then um let me see follicle mist is the bomb the bomb what do you do for thinning hair um it depends on the cause of the thinning um it could be hereditary, it could be medication induced, it could be caused by styling. It just depends. If you're still on Kokomo, can you kind of like elaborate on that? Um, if it's nutritional, you can just replenish your uh, vitamins. If it's because of tension, you might want to do low tension styles or no tension styles. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's so many reasons behind that. You know, it can be, like you said, hereditary. Um, it could be from, so I had a, a client way back and she just always wore buns all the time in the same spot. So she had a little weak area in that spot from wearing the buns in the same spot. So we just constantly mm -hmm. just moisturize. We put the follicle mist on, moisturize. We, we have a follicle mist. The follicle mist, so people, a lot of people ask about our follicle mist product and they say, oh, well, that helped me. Like if I have like, male pattern baldness or if i have like um alopecia areata alopecia. or any type of yeah and it, it will not help with those type of medical problems it will not i'm just being honest it will not help with those type of medical problems hereditary problems male pattern boss and baldness but if you've been wearing like 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 my previous client that I had that was wearing buns in the same place, or if you have worn tight braids and the follicles are still alive, you can use the follicle mist and do scalp massages and it help pr promote growth. Mm, fill it in. But the follicles yes. have to be alive. Right. And <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If they're on any type of medications or anything like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it won't work. Showing her progress from the follicle. Um, Oh yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Before we have before and after pictures from the follow from the follicle mess. Yeah. Right. So yeah. is deep conditioner is moisturizing. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is yeah. our deep conditioner. It's called the moisture boosting deep conditioner. And um like all of our products are like moisture and protein balance. So we have a moisturizing deep conditioner and then we have a protein deep conditioner. We always suggest that people alternate just to give your hair a balance of moisture and protein. So that's uh, that's another thing that's really important because too much moisture can make the hair too soft and then too much and then it can break off and too much protein can make the hair too hard and then it'll pop mm -hmm. off. So you have nice balance right. of moisture and protein that'll keep it. Get a balance. Yeah. Yeah, nice balance to keep your hair from breaking off. So yeah, this is our moisture boosting uh shampoo and we have a moisture i'm sorry moisture boosting deep conditioner has algae sea kelp and um uh seaweed in it <laughs> so it's very <laughs> super cool moisturizing yeah so yeah definitely let's see any other questions here let me see 
conditioners, moisturizing, moisturizing, answer that one. Cream and nature, organic shampoos, um, I would love to try your product. I think that's it, huh? Is that it? I think so. Yeah. Oh, I see. So another question: Um, how should I moisturize high porosity hair? Oh, high porosity hair. Okay, yeah. Oh, high yeah. Yeah, high porosity hair. Yeah, so high porosity hair soaks up everything. It soaks up everything. So if your hair is high porosity, some like low porosity hair is very hard to moisturize. Right. So, yeah, it's hard to moisturize. So you have to moisturize a lot more often. I always suggest that people like use our um our deep conditioner. You have to deep condition more often with a moisturizing deep conditioner so that you'll open up the cuticle layer of the hair with heat. Then right. you can keep that moisture in there. So high porosity hair, low porosity hair, you have to moisturize all. Um, I'm sorry, deep condition all the time with heat. High porosity hair is it's easier to moisturize because it just soaks up everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so sometimes people with high porosity hair they may not have to moisturize as much as somebody with low porosity hair. So I always say like with our growth lotion, it's kind of like you have to kind of just feel your hair. I always tell people, because it's not like a one-size-fits-all with this product. Some people's hair may need a little bit more. Some people's hair may need a little bit less. So, for this product, um, some people moisturize twice a day. Some people moisturize once a day. Some people moisturize every other day. I've had customers tell mm -hmm. me that they moisturize every three days. So, it just depends on your hair. So, I always tell people, feel your hair. Feel your hair. If it feels like it needs moisture, add the moisturizer. If it doesn't, yeah. maybe you can skip that day. So yeah, but high porosity, high porosity hair, you know, doesn't need as much. It's not. It's not as difficult to moisturize because it just soaks everything up. It retains moisture better than low porosity hair. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. It was something I wanted to mention to you guys about um, that. It, and it made me think about it because someone had DM'd me and asked about leaving um, conditioner in overnight. Uh, you do not want to do that, uh, oh. especially especially with high porosity hair, because what will happen is it can cause your cuticle to swell. Um, I know we we kind of come up with our own little remedies and stuff, but <laughs> you uh -huh. can never go wrong. You can never go wrong by following the instructions that the manufacturer has set out for you. Um, uh -huh. For instance, like she was mentioning, a lot of times with their conditioners, it'll say apply heat, you know, sit under a hood dryer or uh -huh. apply heat for like 15 to 20 minutes. So when you're applying the heat, what the heat does, it opens the cuticle. So it allows whatever you're applying to your hair to penetrate. And then when you um, are done or say it says for 15 minutes or for 20 minutes, what that means is that product, that's the amount of time for that product to have its optimal uh, effect. Uh -huh. so like with medications, you know, medications peak at a certain time and then it starts to wear off. So what, uh -huh. it, say, what it basically states is after 20 minutes, it's, the product has done all that it's going to do. Right. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you sleep in it. It doesn't matter if you get under a steamer or a, a hooded dryer. After 20 minutes, it's done all that it's going to do per uh -huh. the manufacturer or per the creator of that product. So that's a habit. I used to have that habit thinking, okay, my hair going to be bomb, soft, you know, like, uh -huh. because what you can do, there is a such thing as over conditioning your hair. Right. So uh -huh. then you can make your hair too soft, you know, because conditioners soften and then it's more prone to break. So it has like the reverse effect. So I just wanted to mention that as well. And then, guys, when you're rinsing your conditioners, just like heat opens the cuticle, cold closes the cuticle. Yes, so it's, yes. it's going to keep everything that you just put in, whether you're doing the egg and the mayonnaise, whether you're doing the protein booster deep conditioner or whatever you're doing, if you seal it with cold water, it's going to keep everything in. That's, That's why if you a good one. Visit visit the salon sometimes they'll be like okay it's gonna be cool that's why because you're trying that's to keep everything in that you just put in if you rinse conditioner or any type of treatment with hot water the product is basically just gonna run right on out down the drain uh -huh. your, your, your hair the, is not 
gonna retain it so always rinse with cool water Yes, that's a great tip. So just remember, guys, that when you use heat, it expands the cuticle. When you use cold, it shuts down the cuticle. So when the yeah. cuticle is open, you want to get all that moisture in there. So that's another thing. Like with this moisture boosting um, deep conditioner, sometimes I will layer it with the oil. So it's kind of like you get that moisture and sealing. And yeah, cover my hair with a plastic cap, sit them to dry for what we recommend 15 minutes. And then rinse it out. And that's a good tip to use to seal in that, use that cold water to shut that cuticle down. That's yep. a great tip. Yeah. Yeah, that is a great tip. Should I wait? Should you wait before going back to because Maybe how long should you wait? Is that the question? Yeah, I think she may be asking, yeah, yeah. how long should you wait? I would say three to seven days. Um, if you get a protective style, like if you get braids, I have some clients that they may come out of braids and then they want to go right back into them. Sometimes it causes scalp sensitivity um, just because of the tension on your scalp. Not that it's too tight, but it's just manipulating. Your, your scalp may be sore, so you want to kind of let it breathe, so to speak, or let your um, hair follicles relax for a little bit before going back uh -huh. into protective style. You could do like two strand twists or flat twists, you know, something like that that is a little more, um, I guess, gentler than uh -huh. a traditional protective style. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to give your your hair a little okay. break in between, definitely. Yeah. So on your 20 week challenge, what are you recommending? Like two days in between or I think it's two days, right? Yeah, about two days, but just, you know, maybe in time between two days and a week, you know, just yeah. to kind of give your hair a break and just kind of just, you know, just, you know, massage it, just give it some air, you know, like they used to say back in the day, give your hair some air, my grandmother, yeah, air it out. Let it breathe. <laughs> yeah, let it breathe. You got to let your scalp breathe. You know, your grandma used to say, let your scalp breathe. <laughs> let your scalp breathe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, like, um, if anybody is not on the protective challenge and you guys want to hop on, it's not too late to hop on a protective style challenge and just take pictures every month and you can see because when you take pictures you're really able to see you know your progress over time right so make sure you take those pictures yeah take those pictures every every month so you can see how when you take your hair down just see how your hair is progressing over time yeah definitely yeah. Yeah. So I guess that is it. I don't know anybody else have any other questions here? I guess not, huh? I think that's it, yeah. 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 Well, I hope that okay. this was helpful, man, because this was... um this was definitely, I think it was something that was definitely needed because a lot of people have questions about protective styles. And, yeah. you know, and can, you guys, if you have additional questions, feel free to DM me. My DMs are open. I do answer questions. I may, it, it may be a day or two, but I'll get to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you have a question about protective styles and um, just as a promotion that I'm doing with Salima, um, anyone that joins the 20 week protective style challenge, you can get 15% off um, of your services with me. Um, and that's until June. I know I do require a consultation for new clients. Um, but after that, your services will be 15% off um, for the duration of the challenge. That is awesome. So y'all, y'all hear that? Y'all go <laughs> check her out. If you are in the Atlanta area, make sure you go and check her out because she is like, she does amazing, amazing work. If you haven't been to her Coco Styles hair page, go check it out and you see. And her daughter, oh my God. Her daughter's <laughs> you know. hair is like the bomb. Like her daughter's hair is just growing so beautifully. And she's eight. And her hair yeah. is so and, yeah. and she and her goal is what, waist waist length, you said? She wants waist length hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and she, she's not since she was like 18 months, I think I've been using your products. Maybe two. I know definitely <laughs> since she was two. Wow. We, I've been using hydrothermal on her. And you know why? Let me tell you why. Because there was another product. It was uh, catered to, like, kids. And it was completely, you know, all natural. Da -da -da -da, and I was using that. And then they kind of, like, changed their formula. 
Oh. And I remember reaching out to you because she was so young, and I didn't want anything harsh in her hair. And right. That, and I was following you on YouTube, and I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. And I've been using it ever since. And her little regimen. So I will tell anybody that has never used Hydra Pharma, they work. Um, their products work. If you go to Coco Styles Hair on Instagram, you'll see a little girl with glasses. And if you just keep scrolling, you'll see the <laughs> in her yes. hair. But yeah, oh god, her hair really is amazing. Does work. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah. I hope she appreciate that when she get older. She probably get it, cut it all off. <laughs> 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 oh gosh, yes, yes. And we do have a promotion too. If you want to go um to hydrothermonaturals dot com, you can use the code thanks ten and get ten percent off of your hydrothermonaturals products as well. So yeah, so this has been a great partnership and um, you know, like I said, we have so much in common, you know, the fact that we were both nurses and I think that um how we both went from nursing to the hair industry and that's like a bond that we have that we can yeah. wait for a while, you know, and you are doing it full time now, which is awesome. And I like I mentioned before, we were out at dinner one time, you said I'm going to eventually do it full time and now you're mm-hmm. living and doing it full time. So Yep. Yes. Happy for you. Yes. yes. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, yes. So maybe we can do a part two. Maybe we can do a part okay. two you know, in a few months and talk about the protective style stuff. I agree. I like that. That would be cool. Okay. All right. But thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Sharonda. I really appreciate it so much. I love you, girl. And you, you, girl. Yes. And thank you guys so much. I see. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Mercedes, who, my, that's my girl, Mercedes, my my BFF, (laughs) Hoops Diva. Yes, Coco everybody. Mo. Yes, light, Coco Mo light, light, right? Yes, everybody who is here, Alicia, Lewis, and every everybody. Yeah, everybody. Thank you, thank you all thank for you. showing up for our first live. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. Yes, we're we'll gonna do it again. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys again. Thank you, Sharonda, and we will do it again. All right. Cool. Okay. Bye bye.